Hi there friends, I'm Jeff Corwin and welcome to the ultimate reptilian adventure as we explore Camp Edwards military base here in Cape Cod, my backyard, and our adventure today is all about the ultimate turtle in North America, the iconic box turtle. So this is Annie Curtis. She's a conservation biologist with the Massachusetts Army National Guard, which I know well because I was a medic in another life in the National Guard. And we're here in this incredibly biologically rich military base because it's home to a, a really healthy population of box turtles. So Annie, today, box turtles are facing some significant conservation challenges, aren't they? Yes, they are, Jeff. Particularly from habitat loss, road mortalities, and the illegal pet collection trade. So you touched on the illegal wildlife trade or people catching these turtles for pets, selling them um, in the pet trade. Why is that a problem? So that's a significant problem because box turtle populations rely on adults to survive in order to keep their numbers up. They face lots of mortality in those early phases, particularly as eggs that get preyed upon by raccoons, skunks, coyotes. The hatchlings also get preyed upon. Few of them make it to adulthood. It takes 10 years for them to become sexually mature. So each adult female really needs to reproduce each year to have a chance to replace herself in that population. Today we're using radio telemetry to track box turtles on the base to better understand how the population here is doing. The antenna Annie is carrying is connected to a receiver, which picks up signals given off by transmitters attached to the back of the turtles' shells in their research study. So for me, there's nothing more special than to be walking in, in a beautiful environment like this and coming across a box turtle. It's like finding a wild treasure in its own portable treasure chest. But a big challenge we face is that these creatures are now disappearing because people are stealing them from their environment. And that's what we're going to explore next. But right now we're having a serious conversation about protecting turtles in the wild. So I'm with Joe Russo and Joe is with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Scott Amati, he's a captain with the Massachusetts Environmental Police. And today, Joe, it's a big problem with people removing these turtles from the environment. Absolutely, Jeff. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know exactly how many are removed each year from the wild because in the law enforcement community, we really only know what we catch. But what we do catch going out of the country, primarily in the wildlife trade, is hundreds and hundreds per year. And Joe, so when you find turtles that are caught up in this juggernaut, that they're being sold illegally, it's not always a happy ending for the turtles. They have problems. Last year, around this time, we intercepted 96 box turtles in one day. Amongst those turtles, we had an outbreak of ronavirus, a communicable disease, not just for turtles, but other amphibians and reptiles that they share habitats with. And of those 96 turtles, there was significant mortality. When we see these turtles, they are wrapped tightly and constricted to avoid detection. Uh, so they're held, they're dehydrated, they're, they can be injured, uh, they're unable to move their, their extremities, and barely have a space to breathe. So what is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service doing, for example, with law enforcement, to protect these turtles? Well, I think it's important to note that uh, wildlife inspectors at the ports of entry across the United States are there looking and we know a lot about this trade from intelligence information sharing with our partners at the state and other federal agencies working together we're out there looking and we're finding these turtles being exported out of the united states in inhumane conditions and scott how important is it to have federal partners with the state agency like yourself it's extremely important uh, for a couple of different reasons um, for your larger scale cases, as he was just mentioning, they're going to be actually more likely than not found at the wildlife inspector level. At the state level here in Massachusetts, that's where they're collecting the animals from. When you go to interview individuals, when you end up charging somebody, you know, it's a joint effort between the two agencies working on both levels at the federal and state. It's really shocking that a box turtle could sell for a lot of money overseas, but it's real value its real treasured worth is as a member of this wild community. And as we've seen here today, 
um, taking these out of the natural environment for the pet trade is extremely detrimental to these important populations that we have here. Even in the best case wild scenario, a turtle like this is going to face significant challenges. And when you take a very healthy, beautiful turtle like this and remove it from the environment, it's almost like the straw that broke the camel's back or cracked the turtle's shell.